Have you ever had the urge to fry an egg on the sidewalk? Or how about baking a nice batch of cookies in your car without using an oven? Well, we have the perfect place for you. It's a magical land where no one actually has grass in their lawn, only a beautiful bed of rocks. A place where cacti grow over 50 feet tall and can stop a car like a brick wall. Where plants and wildlife do their best to kill you on a daily. And on the more beautiful side, where galaxies blink at the skies at night, where the most beautiful sunset records are made. Sorry, Texas. The land of deep canyons and towering mountains. Keep an eye out for snakes and scorpions, because we're going to Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, I'm Jacob and welcome to Destinations Explained, a fun series we do that dives into destinations from around the world. If you watched before, welcome back. And if you're new here, it's great to have you. If you haven't already, like this video, watch till the end, and in the comments below, recommend which destination we should do next. Here we go. Hundreds of years ago, a well-established, civilized community occupied the land we know as Phoenix. It was home to a thriving civilization run by the Hohokam, the ancient farming peoples of the southern deserts of Arizona, which occupied the area from somewhere around 450 AD to 1450 AD. With no easy access to water and extremely low precipitation, this early society was essentially trying to colonize Mars. But the indigenous residents took action and built an irrigation system consisting mostly of some 135 miles of canals, and the land became fertile. The Hohokam Society occupied the Phoenix area for centuries, until a number of droughts and severe floods between the years 1300 and 1450 led to the civilization's abandonment of the area. This space would continue to be deserted for decades, until 1867, when Jack Swilling of Wickensburg stopped to rest his horse at the foot of the north slopes of the White Tank Mountains. He became impressed after viewing the area on a visit to Camp McDowell. Swilling took action and led a group of 17 miners from Wickensburg to the Phoenix area, and began the process of developing a canal system. This erected several crop fields, which you can find today in the eastern portion of central Phoenix near its airport. The town inevitably followed the same formula you see every other U.S. city execute. They got a post office, they extended an existing railroad system to their area, and a post-World War II boom increased the population. I swear, this is how literally every U.S. city is born. Today, Phoenix is the capital of the state of Arizona and is now the fifth most populated city in all of the United States with around 1.7 million people. Phoenix is the anchor of the Phoenix metropolitan area, also known as the Valley of the Sun, which includes Peoria, Glendale, Tempe, Scottsdale, Mesa, Chandler, and Gilbert. This metropolitan area is the 11th largest by population in the United States with around 5 million people. Phoenix has a hot desert climate typical for the southern part of Arizona in a Sonoran desert. The city is known worldwide for its very hot summers, scarce precipitation, and abundant sunshine. Being the sunniest city on the planet, with over 85% of daylight hours being sunny every year. Average high temperatures in the summer reach 160 degrees Fahrenheit to a low of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, so don't come in July, maybe. This is the hottest high average temperature for a city in all the US. For winter, temperatures have a high of 66 degrees Fahrenheit and a low of 44 degrees Fahrenheit, making it an awesome winter destination. Thanks to centuries of hard labor and a collaboration of native people and future settlers digging straight lines in the ground, Phoenix is now a paradise sitting miles away from some of planet Earth's most gorgeous and jaw-dropping landscapes in nature. And what better way to start this list by talking about a museum about musical instruments? Well, I guess we'll talk about nature in a little bit. Because as the tradition goes, let's start things off with the good old tourist attractions. First up on the list, we have the Musical Instrument Museum, which you'll find in Northeast Phoenix. The Musical Instrument Museum was founded by Bob Ulrich with the goal of creating a truly global experience. The museum features over 8,000 different instruments from around the world. We know it may sound crazy, but it truly does feel like you're experiencing different cultures in a whole new way. Think of it kind of like a food tour of the world, but for your ears. It's a mix of visual and interactive media, combined with live performances, which just makes for an overall delightful experience. 
Next up on the list, we have Taliesin West. This historic landmark also sits in Northeast Phoenix near Scottsdale. This was world famous architect Frank Lloyd Wright's winter home from 1937 to 1959. Luckily today, for us fans of architecture, it's open to public tours. Everything about this building was constructed using local stones and other materials, making it an unbelievably beautiful symbol of Phoenix. But it's not without controversy. Wright wanted the views to be so perfect that he wrote President Truman demanding that the surrounding power lines be buried. However, it was a losing battle and Wright eventually conceded. If you ask me, he still succeeded in creating an incredible destination, but you'll have to see for yourself. A few miles away, closer towards the city, part of the famous Arizona boardwalk, you'll find Butterfly Wonderland. This famous fun spot is an interactive indoor rainforest that houses thousands of butterflies, plus a cafe and gift shop to make sure your kids make you feel tempted to spend $50 on a $4 plush toy. Butterfly Wonderland is extremely tranquil and calming. Let yourself get fully immersed in one of North America's largest butterfly conservatories. The cherry on top is the reptile exhibit and the honeybee extravaganza. This is a nature lover's paradise. And we say, when you're in Arizona, get all the nature you can. Up next, we have McCormick Stillman Railroad Park. Sitting north of Scottsdale, this is a gracefully designed park with miniature train rides, jungle gyms, and a 10,000 square foot model railroad display. The building is one of the most unique of its kind, with a creative building design that allows everyone, including children and people in wheelchairs, to view the model train displays. We know we said kids would love the last spots we covered, but this is truly a kid's wonderland. Riding trains all over the place is any kid's dream. Totally not my dream. No self-respecting adult would spend hours riding little trains all day, right? <clears throat> Papago Park sits right in the heart of Tempe, a suburb of Phoenix. This will be our first taste of hiking and picnicking fun in Phoenix. It's marked by the famous hole in the walk formation that makes what all us travelers are yearning for, a damn good Instagram photo or TikTok video. Papago Park is a beautiful 1200 acre park full of hills, hiking trails, and massive saguaro cacti. And if you're a fan of hiking, we recommend hitting Papago Park Butte Loop. It's a 2.3 mile loop and described as an extremely fun warm up trail. Or hike the Double Butte Loop Trail, a 2.2 mile loop that has an incredible view and an excellent array of plants, cacti, and wildflowers. Just be sure to pack plenty of water, even if it's not the dead of summer. The Arizona weather will dry you out no matter what time of year it is. Our last spot sits in South Phoenix and is a short drive from town. This alluring scenic observation point is known as Dobbins Lookout and is a marvelous stone structure overlooking Phoenix. Why hike through rattlesnake country when there's a perfectly paved road you can drive up to reach the same summit? We dare you to take a bad photo on top of Dobbins Lookout at sunset. It's basically impossible. The 2,330 feet of elevation will leave you grinning from ear to ear when you reach the top. This lookout won't leave you disappointed. Now that we got the touristy stuff out of the way, it's time to hone in on some of the nature and recreational stuff. As a quick disclaimer, we all decided not to talk about the Grand Canyon or Sedona or any of Northern Arizona. Yes, they are some of the most amazing places in the world, but it's for that very reason that they're going to get their own video in the future. With that being said, let's see what fun recreational and naturey things Phoenix has to offer. We're gonna start out at Piestoa Peak Park and hike the Piestoa Peak Summit Trail. This is a merciless hike, but it's a fun challenge with a rewarding view. The trek may be a little bit over a mile, but the 1200 feet of elevation gain is sure to kick your butt. Once to the top, you'll have conquered the second highest peak in Phoenix at 2,608 feet. This summit trail has been a Phoenix favorite for several decades and is internationally recognized among hiking communities. Water, parking, and restrooms are available at the base of the trail. Echo Canyon Recreation Area is next on the list for outdoor lovers. It's a beautiful network of hiking trails that you couldn't hit all of if you tried for days. But if you're only going to choose one, it has to be the Arizona famous Camelback Mountain. Camelback Mountain gets its name for, well, you know, because it looks like a camel. 
as one that we've personally hiked, we can't recommend enough to bring lots of water and to stay extra safe on this trail. There will be so many hikers here as it's a very famous trail. If you manage to make it to the top, you'll be looking down an almost straight drop 2,000 feet below. It's a humbling and incredible feeling. Or maybe try the Bobby's Rock Loop. After looking down a 2,000 foot drop at Camelback, you'll want a more leisurely trail to take the kids to. This is a 1.1 mile trail with lots of steps, but most hikers that brave this trail leave smiling and not sweating like there's no tomorrow. All right, no double fisting gallons of water for this one. Tempe Beach Park is a local landmark featuring a splash playground, boating, a baseball diamond, and tons more. While you're there, why not try the A Mountain Hayden Butte Trail? also known as Tempe Butte. It's located partially on campus of Arizona State University and referred to the locals as A Mountain, mostly because it has a 60 foot tall golden A on the side of it. Well, that's the only reason they call it that. Lastly, in Tempe Beach Park, why not rent a boat from Tempe Boat Rentals? Reviews say prices are reasonable and most recommend going in the evening or at night when the city and bridges are lit up. Rent bikes, kayaks, pedal boats, or how about a donut boat, which hold up to 10 people, accompanying a round table in the middle, great for sharing food and beverages, and a circular seating makes for easy conversations. As always, lots of helpful links down in the description below. With the mention of a bike ride a second ago, we recommend renting from the bicycle seller and taking a ride down to Scottsdale Greenbelt. We're no strangers to Greenbelts being here in Texas. So whenever we hear that word, we know we're going. The Bicycle Cellar is a unique facility for all bike lovers in the valley. Rent some wheels and get your sweat on. The Scottsdale Greenbelt is over a 15 mile stretch of multi-use pathway that links four parks in Tempe to North Scottsdale. The route is popular for walkers, runners, rollerbladers, and is ideal for casual or recreational cyclists. Its lush pathways and twisty roads are sure to be exciting and a pretty decent workout. Let's take a dive into the camping side of things by visiting Lost Dutchman State Park. It's located in the Sonoran Desert about 40 miles east of Phoenix. It's named after a lost gold mine and has several trails that lead into the Superstition Mountain Wilderness, which will have you feeling just about as wild west as you can. You'll have the chance to see incredible wildlife like mule deer, coyote, javelina, and jackrabbits. Of course, it's open for camping reservations and boy do we recommend them because the stars are going to blow you away. You're just one long exposure photo away from having one of those crazy Milky Way photos above your head. Don't have time to camp? Why not come early in the day to hike the Siphon Draw Trail, a four mile scenic round trip. You can even take it further and hike up the Flatiron, which makes for a 5.8 mile round trip, although it's noted to not be a very well maintained trail all the way. It's advised that only experienced hikers in good shape attempt to hike to the top, as the climb is steep and difficult to follow. Most people recommend you need at least five hours to hike all the way up to the Flatiron and back down. To cap things off for the outdoor section, just go float the Salt River, renting from Salt River Tubing. We don't know how many of you have this tradition, but floating the river is just about the most perfect balance of fun, relaxation, drinking way too many White Claws, and forgetting to put on sunscreen experience you can have. Every single one of those points is necessary for a good float trip. Floating the Salt River is the perfect way to cool off in the Arizona heat for the whole family. It's under $20 a person for tube rentals, so it's affordable as well. We've seen people take things to the extreme while floating, and we've seen people take the more relaxing strategy. We've even seen people reading books while floating. And speaking of books, let's talk about Audible. We personally find it hard to take the time to sit down and physically read a book. But at the same time, we love books, learning and diving into various topics, especially when researching a new destination. We can imagine some of you feel the same and want to fit books into your busy lives. Audible is the perfect solution with basically the whole world of audiobooks and podcasts right in your ears at all times. Audible offers 30 days for free and a free book. And if you cancel, they even let you keep the book. So please go to www.audibletrial.com venture or click the link in the description to try it out. It's one of the main ways we make money with our videos. So even if you don't like the service and cancel, know that you help support us without spending a dime and you get a free book out of it. Once again, audibletrial.com venture or click the link in the description. Now let's get back into the video. 
Okay, you're nice and sunburnt from literally every single thing we've mentioned so far. You've sipped way too many mango white claws and you need something to put in your belly. It's time to hit some restaurants. Our first stop is the Chuck Box. This is your all American hole in a wall burger place whose claim to fame is always having their meat real charcoal broiled day in and day out. It's located near the ASU campus. And one thing to note is that it's cash only, but that doesn't deter the thousands and thousands of customers that come and devour those tender burgers. Nothing beats a classic homestyle burger like this. Next up, because we're still in the mood for some meat, is Little Miss Barbecue. This is a retro vibe eatery specializing in central Texas style barbecue with traditional sides. That's right, Texas barbecue is so good that Arizona had to steal it. You don't see Kansas City or South Carolina style barbecue making this video, do you? I'm sorry, that's just how things played out. The best barbecue always wins. Little Miss Barbecue uses Arizona white oak, pecan, pistachio, and mesquite firewood in their smokers. And we don't even know exactly Exactly what that means, but it does sound fancy as hell. The meat is sliced right in front of you by the certified meat slicing professionals who want nothing more than for you to enjoy that sweet, sweet meat. Next, we have Cocina Madrigal Tacos and Tequila, a wonderful eatery with classic Mexican fare. It was started by famous chef Leo Madrigal, who's been developing incredible restaurants in Arizona for over 30 years. Born in Oaxaca, Mexico, he now brings tasty Mexican food to South Phoenix. Start off with some elote, then finish off with some of the handcrafted dishes, like their beef tenderloin steak tacos or barbacoa green chili enchiladas. This is some of the best Mexican food you'll ever eat. All right, let's hit some breakfast spots. And we don't even care if it's not in the morning. Lolo's Chicken and Waffles is a black owned eatery with multiple locations around Phoenix, and they're all incredible. The heart and soul behind Lolo's magic belongs to the founder. Larry Lolo White. Lolo's is in the business of feeding not only your body, but also your soul. Their obsession with finding the juiciest, flakiest, most flavorful fried chicken is only matched by their unparalleled focus on cooking melt-in-your-mouth waffles that would make every Belgian shake in their overalls. Although Lolo's is known for its chicken and waffles, there's a whole menu worth of scratch-made soul food. Get your chicken and waffles with a side of Kool-Aid and homemade cornbread and enjoy the best damn soul food restaurant in all of Phoenix. Another great spot for the most important meal of the day is at Matt's Big Breakfast, a contemporary American cafe serving breakfast burgers and sandwiches. It sits just north of downtown Phoenix in a wonderfully tiny 800 square foot building. It may have a small physical footprint, but it has a massive taste bud print. And if we can't convince you enough, just ask famous chef Guy Fieri. He featured Matt's Big Breakfast in diners, drive-ins, and dives, and couldn't get enough of those home-style meals. What do you like about it here? My daddy owns it. Classic pancakes, steak and eggs, and even homemade jam. This place has all your breakfast needs. Last, for our restaurants, we have Chino Bendito. This is a beautifully unassuming counter service Mexican-Chinese fusion restaurant. Yep, you heard that right. It's surprisingly the most rated restaurant on our list, despite being the most hole in the wall esque spot. The Asian style meat combined with the Mexican styled fried beans and rice is a match made in heaven. Locals swear by it and out of town folks flock here. Some of the meals include carnitas, jerk chicken, gen red pork, and so much more. And every meal comes with a complimentary snickerdoodle, a fresh baked cinnamon sugar cookie. After 31 years of successful business, Chino Bendito will be moved into their new location just a few miles away by the time you're seeing this video. This place is the delicious blend of Mexican and Chinese cuisine that you won't find anywhere else. Before we wrap up the restaurant part of the video, let's follow the tradition on bringing on a local to share some of their recommendations. So. Let's transfer over to our friend Cassie from Food Junkie Arizona and see what restaurants a true local and foodie has to suggest. Hey Cassie, how's it going? Hey Jacob, it's going good, how about you? Good, good. So we are on the restaurant portion of our video 
and we need some recommendations from a local and we just want to know what do you got well there's a great place down just on the outskirts of phoenix called worth takeaway and they have some of the best sandwiches what i love about worth takeaway they go and use local resources so they're going to use the small businesses around them for their bread, their dairy, and everything like this. And then every Monday night, in addition to their sandwiches, they do a Monday night dinner. And they'll team up with some local businesses sometimes, like maybe your local pizza place, to come up with like a hot pocket pizza, which is awesome. And then the best time to visit Worth Takeaway is Halloween, because they have a pop-up called Jim Bob's Burgers, where they kind of do a playoff uh, Bob's Burgers. It's so much fun. They dress up as all the characters from Bob's Burgers and whatnot. It just makes it fun atmospheres here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds amazing. On a more fancy side of stuff, you know, we're kind of lacking on some fine dining on our list. Do you have a recommendation in Phoenix for fine dining? Absolutely. We have Durant's here, which is an old school steakhouse. It's going to give you old school vibes. Like when you walk in, you walk in actually through the kitchen, which is amazing because then you get to see all your food being cooked before you get to sit down. And then when you sit down, it's got that old school, like red velvet vintage vibe where they have like the red booths and all old school luxury everywhere. And you're just going to find your classic staples at Durant's, like the steaks and the filet mignon with the bacon wrapped around it. But my favorite thing is their Kobe beef sliders. Mm. But really anything you order there, you really can't go wrong. Wow. Yeah. Those are two killer options. They sound so good. Well, thanks again for joining us and we'll see you later. Thanks for having me. Make sure to follow Food Junkie Arizona on Instagram to help plan your trip. Link down in the description below. Of course, we always have to have coffee. And in Phoenix, our stop is going to be Copper Star Coffee, located in a trendy converted gas station. Stop by for locally roasted coffee and sandwiches. The coffee is roasted, not the sandwiches. I mean, I guess you could ask them the... Ugh, never mind. Anyway, it's a super hip atmosphere and they have live bands playing on the weekends. Stop by this cozy corner cafe before you start your day or pick up through the drive through and make your way into a mountain filled day trip. And what is coffee without dessert? Well, boy, do we have the perfect place for you. Put the Ben and Jerry's down for the night and hit up Novel Ice Cream, a casual spot for gourmet ice cream with tons of flavors and all kind of holding apparatuses. I'm talking cups, Cones, donuts, waffles, anything you can imagine. Seriously, look at some of these. They literally slice a donut in half like a common bagel and fill it with gourmet ice cream. What more can you ask for? For the adults watching this video, it's time to put the kids to bed. We're hitting some nightlife in Phoenix. The dry air has you parched. The howls of the coyotes are setting the mood. You have a few cactus needles in hard to reach places and you need to take the edge off. And no better place to start than Undertow. The menu includes a fictional narrative that explains the story of a ship that traveled the world collecting spirits. It's a bit pricey, but they're drinks you don't have anywhere else. Barter and Shake Creative Hospitality, the team behind Undertow, and neighboring bars like Platform 18 and Grey Hen have a trio of projects in the works. The team recently rebuilt Undertow, which was relocated from Sip Coffee and Beer to the Century Grand next door. Undertow is designed to look like the hull of a 19th century clipper ship as it sails across the world. Similarly, Platform 18 resembles a moving train car traveling across the transcontinental railroad system with the optics and sounds to make it seem realistic. And just steps away is Grey Hen, a whiskey tasting room serving up boozy cures to all of your ailments. All three of these bars are definitely one of a kind. Next up, we have Ren House Brewing Company, a 1930s bungalow that was converted into a super cozy tap room. All brewing and production is done in the building out back, while the bungalow serves as a tap room and gathering place for patrons. The local taste you'll have here will keep your taste buds happy and yearning for more. Try their award-winning Spellbinder IPA, Joe Max Oatmeal Stout, or the Good Boy Wally IPA. If you're looking for delicious craft beer in Phoenix, this is the place to go. Along the lines of converted buildings, our next spot is a brick walled lounge in a converted garage that now offers amazing drinks and free live music. It's known for none other than Crescent Ballroom. Crescent Ballroom is three things. A mid-sized room for national touring artists, a 21 plus lounge featuring live music, and a full bar and kitchen called Cocina 10. 
It's many visitors' favorite places for live local shows, great happy hour specials, and a beautiful rooftop scene complete with string lights for an epic night out. You can't say we didn't warn you though. The tickets sell out way faster than you'd think for a small show, but it just goes to show how good of a time this place is. Aside from the great food and music, the lounge at Crescent Ballroom is an excellent place to mingle with the downtown crowd. The Bitter and Twisted Cocktail Parlor gives all the other cocktail bars in Arizona a run for their money. It's a haunted theme establishment with an extensive craft cocktail menu with those savory bar dishes that you always seem to eat way too much of. Every cocktail is expertly made using only premium spirits, the freshest of fruits, herbs, and the tastiest of bitters and tonics. In addition, Bitter and Twisted has a variety of spirits, craft beers, and wines available for those who want to stick to exactly what they already know and enjoy. Every libation here is a work of art, if you consider rubber ducks and Coke cans art. But it's not all show. These drinks are delicious, and you'll be thinking of this place long after you leave. To cap off this video, let's talk to Cassie from Food Junkie Arizona one last time and see what bar scenes and nightlife recommendations she has. Hey Cassie, just had to have you on one last time. We just need to know, is there any good places that you, a local, know where to go for the nightlife and bar scenes? I guess we have Cobra Arcade Bar if you like pinball machines. They have rotating pinball machines, meaning they're constantly changing them out. And then they have fun drinks that are named after some of the pinball machines, like the King Kong Punch. All right, we all love a good arcade bar. Is there one more recommendation you have? Yeah, there is Lilo Swim Club if you like to swim. And if you like interesting drinks, as well as Japanese and Hawaiian food. Mm. So if you want a little bit of spam, that's your place to go. And what's awesome about this place is it's located inside of a hotel, but you don't have to be a guest at the hotel to go. You can go online to their website and you can make a reservation. I believe it's like 20 bucks for daytime swim and $10 for nighttime swim. And you get to use the cabana beds and just lay out in the sun and have some delicious drinks. And they're very unique drinks that you wouldn't find at normal places as well. All right, well, thanks again for the recommendations and we'll see you later. Thanks for having me. Whether you speak spent the whole time hiking and avoiding scorpions, eating fantastic food, or sipping on guava martinis. We hope you enjoyed Phoenix, Arizona. And if you're planning on going, don't forget your sunscreen and chapstick. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe, and hit that bell so you can catch our next destination. Before you go, we make our living creating free content and resources for you, and it's made possible by viewers supporting us through sponsors like Audible. If you sign up for a free trial through our link, audibletrial.com venture, you'll get any audiobook of your choosing for free, and we'll get a small commission so we can keep making entertaining videos. If you end up canceling your membership, it costs you nothing, and you get to keep the audiobook. So at the end of the day, you could get a free audiobook, support us, and not even have to pay anything if you try it out through our link. Our current favorite title is Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss, which was just released in audiobook form. It's all about the habits and rituals of some of the world's most successful people. So if you wouldn't mind, go get a free book through our link. It helps more than you know, and we very much appreciate it.